Hey everyone, it's Tuesday the 11th of July and it's 12.35 in the afternoon and I'm perched right on the edge of this chair because Snowy, despite being so small, is taking up most of it. She's right behind me. And Smudge is curled up in his favourite spot on the floor. Right in front of the PlayStation 2 games, I don't know why. There's lots more, co more comfortable places around here including a cat activity tower he could curl up on. Nope the floor. Right, so what I've actually done, I've gathered up as much of the die cast that I've bought recently as I could because there's a lot that I've actually put away in all the boxes and whatnot and I can't remember for the life of me what it was I bought so they're probably buried within those boxes now but there is still a lot here because there's two tubs on the floor <laughs> and a little cardboard box uh, so we could be here a while I will warn you now it will be quite a long video of me just showing the die cast I've bought so let's turn the camera that way a bit I'd really love to sit back in this chair but unless I boot Madam off which I really want to do I'll just slide back a little bit that's it so what I've got is a mix of Alsham Carbu, North Walsham Carbu, um, at least one Facebook market find, and there's one item here, I think, that came from um, Buxton Village Yard Sales, which was a complete bust because my stepdad thought that would be a good idea if we. Um, did a yard sale that day and we didn't sell a lot at all really, it was absolutely pointless. We'd have been better off uh, doing a car boot I think. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just start picking models from the desk here and just showing you. So, I actually thought I'd mistakenly bought an identical one of these, but the um, livery is actually different. So I've got Matchbox Super Kings, Audi Quattro. My other one on the shelf down there is actually um, with, uh, sporting a different livery. Is it livery? Livery? I've always said livery. But I think it's livery, isn't it? So I've got that. It's not in bad condition. It is complete, although... One of the um, spotlights have broken off. If I break the other one off, then we've got a matching pair. <laughs> now, I don't normally collect these, but there is the odd few models that seem to catch my eye. And they don't seem to um, demand an expensive price either, not even the box versions. And that's the Matchbox models of yesteryear. I've got a few boxed ones up on the shelf and a few unboxed ones. Um, but usually I don't bother with these unless I do see one that I actually like, like this one. Um, other than that, a lot of what I've got has just been in like job lots I've bought, like that one. No, actually I did buy that one separately. Oh, that's right. Um, Diecast guy, I get a lot of my diecasts from. He does a stall at Alisham Car Boot as well. He's got a box on the floor, which is basically the box he has for the kids. He has all the collectible stuff on his table. And there's a box on the floor, which he has full of random model cars and toy cars and things. Um, 50p each or three for a pound, I believe it is. And I believe that one and that one were in there. I think there was one more somewhere. I think I got three in total. But, uh, the reason I got these is because they work well. This one was complete. The seat's fallen out somewhere again. I keep forgetting to glue it in. But other than that, yeah, these two are complete and in relatively good condition. Which is why I got those two. You know, 50p each or three for a quid. I thought, well, why not? I might have to stand some of these on the floor. I can't remember what I paid for that one, I think. About a pound? Like I said, these 
models of yesteryear don't seem to um, hold money that well. Here's another one that I got, the um, coal and coke. Again, just because it was in nice condition. There's another one more model of yesteryear on here that I got a while back, actually. I don't think I ever showed it. Another one I found in a bundle of cars at the car boot. I just like the red and black colours of this one. See, so these sorts of cars are not really my thing, but I still appreciate them. Because now without cars like this you wouldn't have what we've got today. You wouldn't have had uh, the cars that do really interest me. So, you know, they all developed from these. And to be honest, if I did have the cash, I probably would buy something like that. Or something from that period, you know, the 1920s. In fact, I've got to tell you this, and I, I wish I had a helmet cam on my um, helmet. Because I was heading into Mums, and I was just heading into the village of Lammas. That's why it's called Buxton with Lammas, because they're two villages literally next to each other, and there's no space between them. Anyway, I was literally heading into Lammas, I was just coming off what we call the Mad Mile, it's just a dead mile, straight piece of road. And coming towards me was this little 1900s, early 1900s car. Well, I say little, it was pretty big. Um, that was just pootling along, and I think there was at least four people sitting in it, like, I'm guessing the family maybe were going out in it. That was lovely, I'm sure I've seen that before, pootling around. It was just, I don't know, you know, even though those sorts of cars aren't my thing, I still love seeing them. Right. I've already got a mix of Matchbox, Corgi, Dinky. Um, in fact, a lot of these I actually got from the Diecast guy. <laughs> uh, this one, I can't remember, I may have actually shown this one in a previous video, but I found another one of these for like a pound or something that I still had all the tyres on but it was in worse cosmetic condition, paint condition and whatnot and the windows were cracked so I just stole the tyres off of it and put it on this one so this one's now complete it's looking a bit rough and play worn but I quite like that look that doesn't bother me at all you know some collectors only want mint examples and some Collectors like myself just don't really that bothered. Yes, I do love it when I do find mint models. But, uh, I just like the play worn ones as well. So I got that. Well, I didn't really get that one, I just got the tyres for it. Um, I was going to say, let's do the ones I got off the diecast guy first, but. Uh, I've got some of those in the box on the floor as well, so that's not going to work. Right. I can show you this one because I quite like it. Now, two weeks ago, um, North Walsham had their annual Fun Day event, which actually goes over four days now. <laughs> um, it used to just be one day. It used to be a Sunday when they started about 11 years ago many many years ago back in the 90s and before that we used to have a carnival which was ran to raise money for a swimming pool in the town and then sort of early 2000s i think it was early to mid 2000s somewhere around there i think the pool was actually built in the mid 2000s but anyway they got a lottery grant which made up the rest of what they needed and then for some reason after that they just stopped doing the carnival no idea why it just it's just look as if they thought, right, we've got the money, we're not going to do the carnival anymore. And then, 10, 11 years, I think it's 11 years ago actually, someone decided to do Portion Fun Day. It was just on a Sunday in June. And it's getting that popular, they've now spread it over four days. So it starts on a Thursday in June, and then Friday, Saturday and Sunday anyway. On Sunday, they had classic cars, they have the fun fair, they have lots of other stalls, various food stalls, 
um, some you know shows in like the middle obviously it can't be very big because the memorial park's not that big that's a shame really I mean they had a motorcycle stunt show but you know they couldn't really do the big stunts because they didn't have the room um, anyway some of the stalls were charity stalls and one of them was Faith Animal Sanctuary which is quite local and I did buy a few vehicles from them there's one in the box and I've got two up here I can show you so here's one they were open to offers so I got this one for a fiver lovely Corvette it's a bit dusty but um, the lady said you know they didn't really have time to clean them they literally got them donated and <laughs> just grabbed them and bought them out um, but yeah, I just think that was well worth the fiver. Um, well, actually, I offered a tenner for that Corvette and this, which is actually in good condition, but real chip missing there, so I don't know if I ever paid for it. It's a Majorette, and I do adore my Majorette. I've actually got a white one of these in my box of Majorette cars, because I've been actually um, reorganising my cars and things in there. I went and found some, um, well, what they were listed as in QDs as underbed storage. So they're quite long boxes, but they're shallow or shallower, um, which means I could actually slide them under the bed better. And I've actually been using those same tubs to put my model railway stuff in because then I could stack the boxes up, you know, one on top of the other and have more space on that shelving in there. I'll show you all of that when um, I do the model railway video. So yeah, doors are a bit loose. Well, three of them are. And this one isn't. <laughs> it's got one nice um, stiff door. The rest of all loosened up. Guess which three doors were um, used the most when that was played with? Oh, I'll put the Corvette. I really do like that Corvette. I guess you could say for me, regardless of country. My sort of taste in cars would be 1960s onwards, maybe 1950s. There is a, actually, I'd say 1950s onwards because there is a number of 1950s style cars I do like, and vans. Right, next up. Um, oh yeah, North Walsham also have their monthly car boot sale and the fun day event runs one as well and when I went there I found someone literally just selling a bunch of uh, model Jaguars Corgi and Matchbox mostly now I did get a Matchbox one I think I might have this up on the shelf I can't remember I'm going to have to double check that um, a couple of Corgi ones of the same scale Coast Guard one and the police one Shame it's missing its stickers. But then um, there was a corgi, another corgi one I got, which was just plain gold with a brown roof, you know, meant to be the vinyl roof. That is buried in the box of corgi cars in the bedroom. I did have a look earlier to see if I could get it, but without emptying that whole box out, I'm not going to get it. And there's a couple of um, just little matchbox ones I got as well. All Jaguars. I think I paid about 12 quid for the whole lot. Okay, that one I'm going to put over there because that's part of a haul that I bought. Um, I can do, let's do a few from um, the last weekend. I might remember what they were. And that one, that one, that one. Yeah, so White Hour Ex Express. Well, this has got White Hour home delivery on it. Old Courier, which no longer exists here in the UK. Which you just realised, Corgi, Corgi messed up because uh, it's a left hand drive van. It's meant to be right hand drive. I remember seeing these all over the place when I was sort of growing up in the early 1990s and then they just sort of disappeared. So I assume they just stopped trading. Or someone took them over. No idea what happened to White Arrow. Um, 
Uh, I picked up. I'm sure there was more at the weekend that I picked up. I can't remember what they were now. Or where they went. They could be buried on that sofa actually. A couple of vintage vans. I don't know if this is a police van looking at that badge. It's got ER written on it. Which would be Elizabeth Royal, for anyone that was wondering. AKA Her Majesty the Queen. And what was that one? Oh, something, a self rising flower. I don't know who made this one, it doesn't say on the bottom, but that is a Lido. Not something I normally buy, but I do see the odd one like that that catches my eye. And these were a pound each. Oh yeah, I remember what it was. Here's another one that I got. Particularly two quid because I actually paid a pound for it. I don't know why I did that. I should have just said, you know, these go together, that should be a pound, but never mind. Still worth it for two quid. Matchbox convoy. And a Siku car transport. And that's a Siku? Yep. Or a transporter of some sort. I sure haven't got the cab to go with it, but I did look in the box, I couldn't find it. Oh, there's another one that I got from that same store at uh, North Horsham's car boot. A Pickford's version. I've got a big green one on the floor in a different livery, obviously, because it's green. Show you it. I got this one ages ago back. Uh, yeah, a different car I think it was Alsham. A few years ago now, I got that one. So I thought I'd ha I'll have that one as a as a quid. For a quid. It is actually in pretty good condition. And the wheels aren't bent. The front wheel's a bit bent on this one. That they're doing the splits. <laughs> it's got a camber. <laughs> Whoops. Well, I couldn't do that again. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that? Yeah. It's actually landing nose foot, landed nose first and standing up. It's really busy around here today. There's been a little dump going back and forth, dump and rubble just out here. Um, I've just heard the bin men out back. I've had the grass cut out front. It's like Piccadilly Circus. I think they are getting close to finishing the old council office building out there, which is actually called The Cedars. That's the name of the building. It's actually called The Cedars. Owned by North Norfolk District Council. Our town council used to rent it. Then they got evicted because Weatherspooners wanted to buy the place. Right. And Weatherspoons wouldn't, you know, agree to buy the place with tenants in it, so... And NDC gave them a year to get out. And then, this is just the way I see it. Some people see it differently and blame NNDC. I got a feeling it was like, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. But the deal never went through. After five years, five years, they were trying to sell this to Weatherspoons. I know Weatherspoons made a few requests such as they wanted the whole site secured and there's a few other things that they wanted done. Um, which NNDC, you know, they complied with, complied with sorry. Um, but yeah, for some reason Weatherspoon still didn't sign the paperwork. So NNDC gave up, pulled out of it, the um, deal and uh, decided to just renovate the building and lease it and oddly enough the town councillor couldn't back in there. That wasn't the original plan though but where they're currently renting in town their lease I think is actually up but Norfolk County Council who own it won't renew the lease because it's not up to modern standards. Um, so of course the town centre had to find the town centre. The town council had to find another place to go, and NNDC decided to lease, you know, part of this um, 
refurbished building back to them. And the rest of it is obviously going to go to who ever wants to rent some office space because that's what it's been refurbed into. Completely stripped out and refurbished. Um, but I digress. Next. Here's one I got off the die cast guy for three quid. It's a dinky Mercedes Benz. Uh, hang on, I'll tell you what it is. It's a 250 SE. But I bought it because it's got brake lights. <laughs> Little AAA battery that goes in there. I thought the battery cover was missing, but when I looked at this, there doesn't seem to be anywhere for a battery cover to clip into or screw into. Now, it didn't work when I first bought it, and the diecast guy did tell me it didn't work. But, because the base just screws on, I took it apart, I cleaned up all the contacts, because they were a bit filthy, uh, put a AAA battery in there, and away it worked, so I'm quite happy with that. I also got this from him, the Bassett's Jelly Babies 4 day series van from Matchbox, I've got an Avis one somewhere, and come to think of it, I don't know where it is, yes I do, it's on the shelf there, it's right in front of me, <laughs> um, it's in pretty good condition, and he was telling me he's pretty sure that he shipped with a bag of jelly babies in the back. That wouldn't surprise me, actually. That might have been a promotional thing. What better way to promote it than offer a little uh, free bag of jelly babies? I say free because you still have to buy the toy to get it. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll show you the convoy. This has actually put me in the mood to look on eBay and see if I can find some more. I just want to buy some more convoys, boxed or unboxed. I'm not fussed. I've got a couple of boxed in the bedroom, hanging up. Uh, there, there for a minute. There's another one. I actually got it from this weekend at Alsham Car Boot from the Diecast guy. Another one is about. Four of these transporters I've got now, hang on. One, two, three, four, three. I can't count apparently. No, this is my fourth. I think. I can only see three on the shelf from here. That's orange, there's two blue. Yellow, yellow, blue, and there isn't one on the bottom shelf, so yeah. I believe I've got two of black wheels and two of grey wheels. And I can't remember which version is the earlier one. But I've got the cars with it as well for a tenner. And these are in that pretty good condition as well. So, Especially that Jag. That is actually in very nice condition. Um, I think I got that from him a couple of weeks ago. The old uh, Bedford. Is that a J-Type? Right, this has Lermus ambulance, but it's definitely a Bedford front. But um, not only is it in relatively good condition, there's a bit of paint chip on there. It's got both rear doors, and I've got a couple of others missing one door, and I think one missing both doors. So I was pretty happy to find that one. And here's another one. That wasn't cheap, but these aren't cheap when you get one to find them on eBay. Matchbox Volkswagen Camper absolute mint and I am happy to tell you it cost me five pounds I have got another one of these and that is in rough shape seriously rough shape even the door is missing I think I put it in my scrap box it was, uh, what else did I get from him I think I've got that one as well the Ford Corsair is in a reasonable condition I believe I got that one from him as well because it was in reasonable condition. My other one's actually got the crane broken off. And another one that cost me five pounds. 
and seriously if you look on eBay you're not going to get it for any less especially when you factor in shipping um, in fact it would cost me more if I factored in the shipping this uh, Mark 1 Escort from Corgi Paul Juniors Whiz Wheels yeah it is meant to have a sticker on the roof from what I've seen on Google that's been peeled off what I've seen on Google there is meant to be one on the nose as well but paint wise that is in beautiful condition I've got another one of these nowhere near as good as this that's why I bought it and still with the die cast guy <laughs> I've got an AFS Mark 1 Ford Transit from Dinky that's five pounds as well I just realized I've got another one on the floor that I got from him I forgot to pick it up I think this was only a couple of quid because it's not in top shape it's a bit rough it's this uh, Corgi Ford Thunderbird you know I think every time I go to Alsham Car Boot I must buy at least two items from his store and sometimes he's actually just put an advert up on marketplace but it's not really stuff I'm interested in if there's anything he thinks I'll be interested in he'll message me before he puts it up on marketplace okay got Corgi Chevy van fireball and this one actually cost me a fiver some people might think I'm nuts but again if you look for Husky on eBay if you want a mint one any model of Husky in mint condition it's going to be more than five pounds so I was more than happy to pay that for this little um, US Army Husky Guy Warrior tanker and to be fair I've got a few um, variations of this I've got an SO1 I've got a Shell one they're nowhere near this can this is mint the other ones are all play worn they're all missing that back bit off the tanker very rare to find a mint one especially out in the wild like that find them on ebay but like i said they ain't cheap on ebay either and for those that may not know corgi took over husky or husky later became corgi and i have got a few models where you can sort of see the transition <laughs> Uh, one of those, haven't we? This was a nice find for two quid. A little 176 scale car. Don't know who the maker is of it though. Normally, if it's Oxford diecast, it would definitely say on the bottom. I don't think that is. That could be Carrarama or something like that. It says my magnifying glass in here. No, it's not. I took it through. Not unless I've got another one on the shelf in here. Nope. Oh, well. um, oh yeah. I found a Weebix trailer from Corgi. In case you wondered why I bought just the trailer, because I will re remind me I've got to fix that. I already had, is what I was trying to say, <laughs> just need to put a dab of super glue in there, the uh, cab, so it's got wheat mix written on it. There we go. It has got a rear door missing. Now the reason I've only got, or I had only the cab, there was a trailer with it in the box, but I didn't get it because I had the door missing. I thought, you know, I'll see if I can find a trailer with both doors. Every freaking trailer since then that I came across only had that one door. So I've come across this at Alsham Car Boot in a box of other stuff. 50 pence, I thought, you know what, I give up. I'm just buying one with a single door. And, uh, I was thinking maybe I'll come across another one that I can get with only one door on it and pinch it and put it on this one. Now I bet I don't find one with um, a single door on it, do I? bet I'll find one with both doors. I guess any Corgi trailer with um, red doors on the back would work. 
Well, that matters too much because when I put this on the shelf, you're not going to see the back doors anyway. Right. Now, this one has actually pleasantly surprised me. Got this a few weeks ago at Alsham Car Boot, and it's a majorette car transport. Seems it's worth quite a bit of money, especially mint and boxed. Now, I saw someone post one of these, mint boxed, complete with cars and everything, on one of the diecast groups I'm on on Facebook. 230 quid was the asking price. I was like, ow, that seems a bit bloody steep for that. So I went and looked on eBay. I found one of these out of box, so no box, with the cars, not in 100% condition, a bit better than this one, paint wise, and obviously it had the cars. Current bid was 107 quid. I was like, mint and box for that? Yeah, that's a, probably a good price to ask. I paid 50p for this one. So, I'm, I know it's worth more than the 50p I spent on it, but obviously not nowhere near 100 quid, I wouldn't have thought. I would say, if I'm going by those bids and whatnot, 30 quid as it sits, most likely. I don't know what the fascination is with this particular transporter, but I'm glad I spent the 50p on it. <laughs> um, oh, I got this from the diecast guy a few... Sorry, I got any gear, hang on. <laughs> a few weeks ago. Or Bedford TK tipper from Corgan. I noticed the tipper mechanism needs a bit of work on it. Needs a lot of work on it. Looks like half of it has actually disappeared now. Then again, it would still display quite nicely like that, wouldn't it? I was a bit miffed because then a couple of weeks after I got this, I saw he had another one that was in pretty much mint condition. I was like, no, oh, I want that one. I should have got that one as well. Actually, I do want to go again this weekend, hopefully with Mum, if she's got the car back from um, having repairs done. Um, we can have a look up there. So, I've got one more car in a box there, but I'm going to save that because it's related to a job lot I've got in a box there. Anywho, I found this at um, the yard sales in Buxton. I did manage to sneak off and have a ride round on the push bike with the trailer. This was actually at a yard literally round the corner from Mum's. And it is a limited edition um, Corgi Road Sing, which is their 176 scale thing, the Renault Magnum truck. And, um, the, the mirrors haven't even been stuck on, they are still there in the packet. And I've got the certificate there as well. Um, now, I wouldn't have no problems, you know, putting this on the railway and using it on there, but considering the location for my layout is going to be based on a village I'm not sure that would fit in on the roads or within the thing <laughs> well it was 12 quid and I bought it because that was such a lovely looking model and as I've mentioned I think in a previous video in case I haven't I'll mention it again I want to build an end-to-end -end railway line on one of these um, Lego shelves. I'm going to change the shelves and put better ones up. Maybe have it so it runs right over this PC as well, right down that wall. Um, probably about the height it is, or I might lower it a little bit. Just because I want to, I just want to build an end-to-end -end as well. That, you know, I could just have a permanent display up here for it, one that I haven't got to keep getting down. Um, when I start on that, I have absolutely no idea. Right. Oh, I've actually got that one. I've got one of these up on the shelf, actually, which is in roughly the same condition as this, but I bought it because the other one's got wonky wheels. It sits 
on the to one leaning to one side like that. That one doesn't, so I'll probably just swap it. Now, before we get into the big box of goodies, I found this for 50p at Alsham Car Boot. Just looks like a simple matchbox. Well, yeah, it is a matchbox. Toy bulldozer, nothing special, right? Well, I've got a number of Matchbox bulldozers, various types and from various years, right back to the sort of 1960s. All of them, apart from one other, which actually lost one track, still got one attached. They have no tracks, and the other ones I've got, like this one, are all missing the bloody cab. So to find one in the wild like this for 50p, with both tracks still intact and the cab still there, is exceptionally rare. <laughs> so that's one of the things I love about collecting, when you do find something like that and you get it for an absolute bargain. Well, to most people it's just a toy bulldozer. Well, I suppose to most people these are just toys. But, uh, you know, to me, as a collector, they're more than that. Oop, sorry. Snowy. Bit of sour. I'll be careful with that housekeeper. Maybe she is still behind me. I thought she jumped off. Just got to clear a bit of room. whilst throwing cars around the room apparently. That's another one that's going to go on the shelf. I've got a bit of room in, on the corgi shelf. These ones will want to go on the shelf in the hallway. Hopefully. I did see the diecast guy walking around down the North Horsham car boot at the weekend. You know. At the end of the day, he's just a toy car model dealer, basically, if you want to call him a dealer. I've seen him, you know, he'll buy job lots of stuff that he finds on Marketplace. Um, and just sell it for a small profit. He's not one of these that, you know, up the price stupidly. You know, some um, dealers will do that. Buy something for like two quid and then sell it for like a tenner. <laughs> yeah, he's not like that. He'd put like an extra couple of quid on top of what he paid for it. So if you bought something for like two quid, he'd put it out for like four, maybe five, depending on the condition. Because sometimes people will just sell stuff just because they need to get rid of it. They, they don't care about the true value, they just want rid of it. Perhaps they're clearing a property something and they just need it gone. Um, which is fair enough. I mean, I've got no problems paying um, the true value for something. And I have to say, when I see on these collectors groups that I'm on, you know, what some people charge for them, and that is actually the value of that model, and I'm just like, oh? Uh -huh. You know, I've been collecting for years and that some prices and values of things still make my jaw drop. It was like, really? It's really worth that much? Because when that guy posted that Majorette transport that he's got, you know, mint in box for 230 quid, I was like, 230 quid? Question mark? And he's like, yeah, they're, they're pretty expensive and rare. And he was absolutely right. That's why I went looking on eBay. I even looked at items that's sold. See what they sold for. I was like, ooh, okay. <laughs> Some people are nuts. And then I've actually seen people asking prices for some models that I think are overpriced and people are bloody willing to pay for it. You know, they're snapping it up and I'm like, maybe it is worth that then. Especially with Model Railway and Model Railway locos and things. So I follow a um, 
I'm on a group called Great Eastern, Great Eastern Model Railways. I can't remember what the last bit is. But they've actually got a shop in Norwich. You know, so they themselves post things, you know, especially setting used stock because they do some tradings and whatnot and they buy in second hand stock. As well as brand new stuff. Um, and they've put things up and I've gone, ooh, that looks expensive. Well, that just seems too expensive for that. And then I look in the comments and it's sold. And I'm like, maybe it's not then because someone's willing to pay it. <laughs> so I guess the, the um, lesson there is, you know, just because you think it's not worth it doesn't mean it's not worth it. It just means it's not worth it to you. <clears throat> Anywho, I'm digressing quite a bit in this video, aren't I? I actually did have an update video that I want to put up before this one. The first half of it has disappeared off the camera. I have no idea what happened. I'm sure I pressed record, or at least I hope I pressed record. Otherwise I'd spent about half an hour talking to myself for no reason. <laughs> but <laughs> there's only one portion of the video was on the camera. I was like, what on earth? <clears throat> so, I don't know. I don't know if I accidentally deleted it or if, like I said, I just thought I'd hit record and I didn't. Then again, I'm sure I stopped recording, so... And this is saying I'm recording. Anywho, next lot of models. I've got a few more in a box down there as well that came from the car boots. But anyway... Sorry so much, I just scared the crap out of him picking up the box. So... After, um... <clears throat> I'd done at North Welsh on Fun Day, because me and a... A um, friend of mine went over there and actually met up with another friend of mine that was over there. We met up with Kat, um, who was uh, with a friend of hers raising money for the Dogs Trust and Cats Protection. Anyway, when we got back from there, <clears throat> I do what I usually do. I just browse Facebook Marketplace and I saw a job lot of cars on there for 50 quid. Quite a large one. And they were um, 143 scale, all boxed. Some of the boxes were squished and damaged, but other than that, the models inside are mint condition. Um, I have no idea, I think I worked out there was a good 30 plus of these model cars. Um, so I sorted through them, and in this box, I think there's, yeah, there's two Lamborghinis in the other box, I kept the ones that I wanted. I'm actually sure I'm missing one. I thought I bought my Ford Capri through here, but I haven't seen it. Unless I dropped it in a box, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, these are what I've got. A Porsche 911. All the ones I want, didn't want, I actually took over to Mum's to put on the yard sale and didn't sell one of them. Which is why I think I'd be better off just taking those to a car boot sale. What else have we got? We've got Jeep Grand Cherokee. I just thought to keep. Uh, BMW M5, which is actually a good box. Uh, Subaru Impreza, a bit squished. Uh, what's this one? Mercedes Benz 350SL Cabriolet. Put that one over there so I don't bury it. Uh, is that the Skyline? Yeah, Nissan Skyline GTR. And another Mercedes Benz. It's a Mercedes Benz 180. It's a lovely looking car. See, I'm not really a fan of the Subaru and Pretza, but I kept that one just because it's iconic. Citroen 11 CV. And Porsche 911s, there was um, two of those. Fiat 500, there was two of these as well. So one of those has gone over to mum's. Uh, a BMW X5. Yeah, not really my cup of tea, but it is quite a common and popular car. A Citroen DS19. Just rattling for some reason. 
Renault Alpine or Alpine. I don't know how the French French prefer to uh, pronounce that. Come back to that one in a minute. Renault 5 Turbo. Not one I really like, but again, it's an iconic car. And this one, which I opened up, the Ford Mustang. I opened it up because the screw had fallen out of there, so it was all just sort of flapping around. So I opened up, took it off the base, and used the screw from there that held it to its base and put it in there. Not a nice uh, Mustang. Now, I already had one of these Cadillacs, or was it the Cadillac Eldorado, on display over by the TV. Um, I've got it on one of the groups. I just realised this one is missing a tail light. Oh, no, it is in there, so I just need to glue them back on. But my other one had the same problem. I had bits missing and scratched because I just bought it for like a quid off someone off of one of these Facebook groups. Um, so that one went over to Mum's to be sewed. And I also had another one of these ones in a box. Now this one is actually mint, there is nothing missing off of this one. And as I planned to open all of these cars up, I thought, well, I might as well just keep the one I've got that's already open and just sell the other one. And there was one more, it was a Corvette, and I don't know if I can reach it from here. But it stands that, yeah, I can't. Um, but again, the Corvette I've got down there was in mint condition, so I thought it was a bit pointless opening up another one, so I just left it in a box and took it over to Mum's. Oh, and the other two I've got, a couple of Lamborghinis. I'd have preferred Ferrari. I'm not much of a Lamborghini fan, but I do like Ferraris. I do like chucking things around on the floor. Yeah, got quite a few of them. There's actually one more here. That's not like these ones, but it came with a job lot. I really do like it. It's made by a company called Solido. Solido? 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 I don't know how it's pronounced, but I do know it's French. I did a bit of research on it. I've actually got a couple of uh, Mercedes lorries up there, which are made by Solido as well. But they seem to do quite a range of die-cast models as well, from you know collectible models like this to your cheap and cheerful models, which I've got two of through there. But yeah, look at this. Rolls Royce Coupe, and that in such a lovely display case as well. It's got proper little clips. Each end. Now for everything was that there must be a good there's over 12 cars at mum's I've got to sell so and then we've got this lot here so I think it was definitely worth the 50 quid most definitely right but we're getting there so I got this box offered to me from the diecast guy the other week couple in here that I can um, stick up for sale. There's just a few in here that I really want. That one I've already got, Captain America. I'm going to keep that out because I want to compare it with the other one. See which one's in, I was going to say the best condition, but looking at that one I think they're both the same. But yeah, I really bought this because there's just a few in here that caught my eye, like the uh, Major Rec Renault 5. Um, another Mark II Escort GT, because I know everybody loves these. If I put that up on one of these uh, Facebook groups I'm on, that'll get snapped up. Uh, I haven't got that version of this. So that was one that caught my eye. I've got a red one. I think I've got a black one. Not that one. That's my second one of these Jeeps. I'm not sure if I've got that Mini. I'm going to have to double check. I've 
got a Maisto car and I've actually started a box for Maisto. got vintage Hot Wheels here. And I've got, I believe that's a Maisto. Mini Cooper. I've got a few of these Mini Coopers exactly like this one. This one is in... near mint condition I say that because there is a chip on one tail light that is literally the only chip I can find though you see the difference on the tail lights this left one's got chip in it that is it otherwise it's mint this one I might put on eBay I thought it's got the front mis um, damaged unfortunately so, and it's got some bent wheels otherwise it's in, the paint is in relatively good condition. Um, same with that Jeep, actually. I could put that on eBay. I've got a good one of these as well. I think my other one is missing the back bit off of it. I think. Little green mini with a black base. I think my other one's got the grey base. Again, I'm going to have to double check. Now, this is one I've not seen before. My other one's got a white box on the back. This one's got a red one. I can't read what it says on it. NYK. Um, I think I could chuck these in my for sale box as well because I'm pretty certain I've got that one. I'm not sure if my green one's got the number 7 on the front though. So I'll keep that one for now. I can stay in the box. And we've got a couple of, uh, I think they're Matchbox motorbikes. Another Majorette. I do like these older Majorettes. I don't know what it is, but I think it's just because they do the bog standard boring cars. Corgi Escort. I've got it in green. I've got red ones as well, but I haven't got this light blue one, so. It's an absolute mint. Voxel Nova from Corgi. And uh, last but not least, we've got this Hot Wheels. And another motorbike. And that is it for this little hardboard box. Which I'll sort out properly later. Yeah, I'll put the Captain America in there because I don't know where it is. Unless I forget where it is. Right. This way. Yeah, that's what a find as well. The Chevy Chevelle. I think that is the Fast and Furious one if I remember correctly. WW that's a Jada Toys. I mean I can't actually read it. I can read the white, but I can't read it where it's in, you know, matching the base. But yeah, I believe that's uh, the Fast and Furious one. Now, it seems like I've got a thing for 118 models at the minute, which is quite a bad thing because I have nowhere to put them. But I bought them anyway. So, I've got this mirror. Mirror brand that is Buick. What was it? Buick Century. So Mirror is a Japanese company, or at least it's made in Japan. It's quite a nice uh, model. I forget what I paid for that, but I've got two models from the same guy. Found them on Marketplace. That was the other one I got. Online. The online group. Oh, excuse me. Right. You remember earlier, I showed you that uh, red Corvette that I got from Faith Animal Sanctuary. Well, I got this one as well. 
lovely big, big old caddy here. I can see it's been um, displaced, I'm missing the roof bit because I don't see the holes there. Uh, that doesn't bother me. I did have to do a couple of minor repairs on it. When I was looking at it, this part of the hood trim fell off. So I've just super glued that back on. And when I got home, this bit, the windshield bit all fell off, so I had to glue that back on. But still a nice model. Made in China. Cadillac. It's a lovely model. Right. How heavy is that box? Not very heavy. Oh, there's the Ford Capri. It's in this box. Making the kitty jump. jump. I have got a bunch of uh, new Hot Wheels to open up. I haven't done them yet. I've got three here. I'm trying to get my fingers out of the way so you can actually see them. So those have got to be opened up. Yep. I've got one in here, two in here, three in here. That shouldn't be in here. This weird looking police car. I that's 50p if I remember right. Uh, there's another uh, 176 scale. Is this Oxford? Yeah, it is Oxford. Land Rover. Um, I've got a few bits in here that I bought as spares or repairs. Oh, this come off of, but it looks like half a blue light. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a guy on, I think it's a diecast scrapyard Facebook group. Um, he's bought from me in the past, that was a while ago, but he was selling up a load of stuff to do it real health, and it was all spares, repairs stuff, you know. Projects he said that he's not going to be able to complete, and I did buy a number of them. Um, there's a couple here that I think would be alright just to display as they are. Even though this one, for example, has got the um, rope and hook missing. But I think just for display purposes, if you can keep that bit up, spec lift, that would be fine. Nice Ford Transit. Police Rescue. Um, also got two refuse trucks, which are cool. You've got the Biffle one. I'm not sure why that one is spares or repairs. It doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. It seems to be in good condition as well. Wheels might be slightly bent at the front here, but it's not going to affect it on display. Oh, it's got a crack in that front window. You know, at this angle, in this light, I couldn't see it. It's completely invisible, that scratch. Yeah, it's just a scratch. I can't feel it. Um, this one though, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't stay up. But I should be able to fix it just by bending that little tab up a smidge. You've got to be careful with die cast though, because if you bend it too far, you snap it. It's got three quid um, price sticker on it, which is exactly what I paid for it. I think most of these were like three quid each or two quid each, something ridiculous. We've got a Chevy, Matchbox, Dinky, missing the headlights, maybe I could find something to go in there. And another Mur Hill tractor, now the tractor itself, it's just like mine, it's perfectly fine. And I bought it because I thought, yay, trailer with tyres. Yep, missing the hook, <laughs> just like my other one. Although this is better than my other one simply because it has got the four tyres with it. Although I think they are slightly bent those axles. It's hard to tell if it's actually... Yeah, they are bent, them wheels. Um, so I think the only thing I can do is to try and straighten the axles out on one of these. Either one, because paint wires are both in exactly the same condition then just try and find something to replace that hook with. Um, 
found this at a car boot sale uh, a couple of weeks ago, Bedford TK from Corny. Little um, blue circle cement truck. It's missing the passenger side mirror and the driver's side turn signal. Other than that, there's no paint damage and that would be nice up on display. I'll probably put it up here with my other little trucks. Um, again, a few weeks ago I got this from the diecast guy because I think it's a nice setup. Very nice Mercedes Benz with a very nice caravan with a pot plant in the back window. You see that? <laughs> that's the second Corgi caravan I've got, but this is the only one out of two that's got the uh, pot plant on that table in the back there. And the car is near enough mid. I could think I'd be paid like a fiver for this or something. I want a great deal. Actually, it's a bit more than that. At last, but not least, I think this is the final vehicle now. This big old Corvette from Barago, which was just four quid. And I actually went back for this one. I saw it on my first walk around, because I usually do two walks. But if it's too hot, then I usually sort of just do a walk and a half around. Um, and I saw it the first time, and I just walked off and thought, I'll think about it. So I weren't too sure if I wanted it or not. Um, so yeah, it was on my way back to the car basically when I was doing my second walk around. I thought, yeah, if it's still there, I'll grab it. So it was still there, so I grabbed it. Got something spilt all over the front of it. I'm not sure what it is. And it was sitting in the kitchen. Anyway. There we go. Quite a nice little haul in my opinion. I'm quite happy with all this. Um, like I said, there is actually more stuff, but it's all sort of packed away in other boxes and things. I'm not going to put the matchbox in here. I've got a box for that over there. I sorted out all the uh, matchbox uh, super king and king size and whatnot, all in a box over there. Oh yeah, it's like my third one of these as well now. Fourth one, because one of them hasn't got a tow hook. One of them's got an amber light missing. Uh, that one can stay up here for the time being. That one can go in here. I think a lot of that on the floor can go in here for now. Put the Stang in here for now, and I'll put my Mercedes in here. That bus can go in the matchbox box. Right. Yeah, I'll deal with that on the floor in a bit. My can of handy for a Code 3 model, which I've got some plans for actually. There's a few uh, die-cast models I've got, such as a Corgi Escort van that I want to do some modifying to at some point. Anyway, that is it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next video will either be an update video, because I've got updates on the workshop over at Mum's and um, yeah, they also fell for a scam the other week. All ended fine though, thankfully. But yeah, they did fall for one. and nearly fell for a second one actually. Anyway, oh, I've been doing this for over an hour now. Just over an hour, an hour and five minutes. Um, yeah, so if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. And uh, as always, I'll put links in the description to my other two YouTube channels. I've got a Lego channel and I've got a gaming channel. Um, and I've also got a Discord server, which is up there, currently up there at the minute. Yep. And a Twitter.
Twitch account. I'm going to link to that as well. So, thanks a lot for watching everyone. Feel free to check all of those out. The links, as I said, will be in the description box down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.